Can people hear me? Yes, that sounds good. Okay. So I've been mixing music for 15 years now. Um, started using by using a uh, pure wave editor. I wasn't. I'm not interested in uh, doing live DJ mixing. Um, I was mainly just wanting to take a collection of songs and put what I liked on the you know into a mix that I could then play continuously. Um, I got carried away. The first mixer was mix was about three hours forty minutes long. Um, and there's a bunch of mixes on my website um, that are everything from short to CD length to three. I think my record now is eight hours of continuous mixing. So um, a while back when I was looking at this, the software that I saw around was, has it just blinked? No, brilliant, excellent. Um, the software that I saw around uh, for open source mixing was predominantly aimed at um, live mixing. So uh, looking kind of like a, pro a closed source program called Tractor, where you have uh, in files and it kind of tries to simulate um, the logic of a, a set of turntables or, or inputs and a set of faders between them. So it will help you line up um, music as you, uh, as you go and then you, you can sort of tweak the little volume knob, knob over to gradually fade it from one track to the other and then you're finished, okay, that's good. But all you see is basically sort of wave or maybe you know, a, a bit of an abstraction on that and you occasionally get some um, bar markers or beat markers but nothing else. You don't have an, an idea of which phrase you're in, which, um, you know, where the, the music up, is up to. Um, and so I was looking around and this program, this is the version 7 of Mixmeister. It's a com commercial software, runs only on Windows but it has a couple of really useful features for me. One was I can point it at an entire directory and it will just find all the music in that directory and put it in my catalog and give me um, not only you can see that you know, maybe a little small on the top, top left but you can see title artist beats per minute and then the key that it's in and that's really useful because one thing I really like in mixes is when you get music that flows straight from one track to another and it, there's no key change, there's no clumsy sort of drop this out and fade straight into that because they're in completely different keys, that sort of stuff. I like a, uh, a mix uh, and several of my mixes there is, so there's uh, the fun, quickest one I have is Ultra Speed 3 which has 42 tracks in 80 minutes um, and it's almost all listening to two tracks simultaneously. So the whole aim of it for me is to take m music you already know and produce new music, new sound by taking two tracks. You know, sometimes you get the melody from one and the bass line from another and they, it totally changes the sound of it. So that's what I want. And I don't care. I c you can, with Mixmeister, you can do live mixing. You can actually, if you've got two sound cards, you can have one playing and you, it uh, gives you this nice, uh, in the time bar, in the middle there, you get a sort of black um, stripe. The, actually, the, the other tab is a bit more interesting. Let's try that. Um, this is the version that I use. Um, yeah. I wanted it to go full screen and there it was, good, something. Um, this is the version that I use and it doesn't have one crucial feature um, that I like but it doesn't matter. But um, So you can press play and you, you, you'll get this sort of black line progressing along your mix 
as it, as it shows you where the actual live output that everyone else can hear. But on your headphones, you can place the play point at any point and play so you can preview and try different tracks. Meanwhile, it's playing another track somewhere else, um, which is, for me, it's really good because, I'm, again, I'm not interested in trying to tweak the mix as, as, it, as, pe as other people are hearing it. I want to be able to finish that fade, get that working, keep on going and let other people catch up to that. But the other really nice thing for me with Mixmeister, and you can see here, is the, out, the outro of one track has a marker, and those, are mar those normally just extend on bar, by bar, so you drag a neck and another bar, and it will give you another bar at a time. And the intro has a, a similar sprocket. The two sprockets line up. So if you extend, you've got eight bars there, and you then expend, extend one out by 16 bars and the other out by 16 bars, they will re-lock. And it will seamlessly, you can't see it on this unfortunately, but it will seamlessly change the beats per minute from one to the other, pitch shifting both tracks into, so if, you need, if you're um, going from say 135 beats a minute up to 140 beats a minute, Rather than making everything sound a little bit quicker in one and slowing down the other, it will, it will, re, um, it will stretch them out without changing the key. So you really can. I've got one mix just to demonstrate this, which goes from um, 100, 115 beats a minute up to 175 beats a minute in 17 minutes. And you can't hear any point which, which it sounds like it's speeding up. It's just all nice and seamless. Um, so, and that's really useful because the human ear is very good at pitches. If you can, you can tell if two, you know, if something's in A and the other thing's in A sharp. That's really a, a huge clash. It, even if they're in the same A, but they're not quite tuned to the same 440 hertz, you'll hear it. But we can't, we find it very difficult to hear changes in rhythm over time. Um, there's a, a lovely audio illusion um, that mixes one loop and as it gets, as it goes, it gets faster. But as it gets faster, it mix in, mixes into a slower version of itself that gradually fades in. So it's constantly getting faster, but you never actually hear it speed up to the point where it's too fast. The, the new slower version is coming in. Anyway, that's a complete distract, distraction. So this is what I want in open source, because there's a couple of things that are a bit annoying about this. One is um, if you want, um, one, of, one of the things that I would like to be able to do is take my 80s music collection and try mixing some of that. But I don't want my 80s music collection in with all of my other music. In Mixmeister, you can see just here eh, on that screen there, you, have, you can have, you can see your entire catalogue or you can tag particular tracks as being a certain, you know, a certain catalogue item. So I can say all of the music that I've purchased from this particular label is in one or all of my Creative Commons licensed music is in one and I, then I can choose that catalogue item and I just mix that. I want the, uh, the ability to say I don't just want one catalogue item, I want to see a, you know, basically a, a multi-select check, a multi-select drop, drop down or a set of checkboxes. So I can say I want to see um, Gemendo and Magnatune and Ectoplasm Creative Commons licensed music or maybe I just want Ectoplasm or maybe I just want these other things. Um, the, there's a Another couple of features that aren't obvious in this but are really useful, you can add volume. So you can, you can see here 
but it also automatically adds, every time you add a track, it will try to do a fade out from minus 6 dB up to 0 and fade out from 0 down to 6 dB and then eventually to minus 48 or whatever. It, consider it's, it's local ground. Um, you can change those. You can move them or move them around. You can also add um, markers for bass and treble volume. You can add um, a, in this case, VST effects plugin. So if I want to fade out to echo, then, um, then I can just fade out. Or if I want to, f you know, start with a flanger, phase it in, then do that, then I can add that in. So this is kind of what I, if anyone else is interested in writing something like this or talking about, I'm sure I can do this in something like GStreamer. I just I have no idea how. So if you'd like to, to do something like this, talk to me. Ooh, good, awesome. Mike's take a few seconds to start up. Thank you, Paul.